We like the sun. We like the sailboat. We like the soccer ball. We like sun. Excellent. My daughter Ajanaria is eight years old and she's been attending Victory Center for four years now. She's very comfortable in this setting, being in an environment that they're always in. We have students with autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, speech delays. They come to school every day. They're in a safe, loving community and we just like to keep it as consistent as possible. We're here in the tropical climate. We have seen the impact that climate change has on our society and we're looking at more storms. And so it's affecting our livelihood, our way of life. If schools are closed for an extended period of time, a lot of our students can really struggle with that. The important thing for us is to protect our community and make our school more resilient and more ready for the effects of climate change. Antigua and Barbuda is the first country in the Atlantic region to be hit by a Category 5 hurricane. Our first Category 5 storm was in 2017 and that devastated our sister country. The most stunning thing for me, what Hurricane Irma did to Barbuda was like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. It literally changed the landscape of the entire country. We expect that in, in natural disasters and, and hurricanes that are Category 4, Category 5, that the grid will close down. The persons who are more impacted from power outages would be women and children. How can you rebuild when your home is damaged, you have no electricity, mentally you're stressed out, and how do you do that? It has been quite daunting when you lose power because having children, and especially one with special needs, when that upsets the whole environment, you have to think about how you can keep her occupied and doing things and the way of life that she's accustomed to. Currently we don't have any backup sources of power, so we would have to wait for the grid to come back on. With the needs of our children, it's very important that if a storm is coming, we can get the power back on so they can return to school and return to normalcy as quickly as possible. How do we become more resilient so we wouldn't be as vulnerable to climate change as we know we are right now? What is going to happen to us? Everybody needs to be moving faster. We should be progressing more rapidly to the energy transition. Developing countries seem to be leading the charge. And that's because we are the most affected. And what we really want to demonstrate is that if we can make the transition, bigger countries who have caused the problem that we are facing have no excuse not to make the transition. Antigua and Barbuda have a very ambitious program. We are hoping by 2030, 86% of our electricity installed capacity will be renewable energy. We are looking to technologies that would help us transition as quickly as possible. I've been driving electric bus a little over here. I take two schools a day. Everybody knows children will be children. It's nice driving them around, so it's fun for me. Not only children, but you have the staff. I always keep the curtains pulled across. And you have this particular lady, every time she comes in and she sits down, the first thing she do, pull across the curtain because she wants people to see her in a nice bus. It's always somebody, how it feels and how this, and everybody wants to know, everybody asks questions. So I think if more buses like it comes, it will be a good thing. In terms of electric vehicles, very simply, you know, you have a battery on wheels. Bidirectional charging is actually going to revolutionize our energy sector. When you traditionally charge a vehicle, you're taking power from the grid or some sort of a energy storage or power supply source and charging the vehicle. Bidirectional charging allows you to take energy from the vehicle to either power a building or inject power into the grid. We want to show that an electric school bus can provide reliable backup power to the Victory Center in the wake of power outages. So we're testing this scenario by discharging the same amount of power from the vehicle to meet the needs of the school. Right now we're almost in balance, so providing all of the power that the school needs. 
if Larissa changes the amperage to higher, then we will be actually surpassing what the school needs and discharging onto the grid. This is very pivotal. The Victory Center would be able to be utilized as normal in the case of an emergency. Having the devices on, having the, the electricity on. In the wider community, services needed to store medication, needed to charge their phones. They could come to the school, know that there's a building that's up and running and can assist them in any way possible. Antigua is ahead of the curve. It is an extremely innovative and new way to apply this kind of technology. We hope to get knowledge from this as to how it could be scaled up, how we could use it for our essential buildings, how we could use it for our shelters, or even how persons could use it for their homes to ensure that there's always backup power, that their downtime is very short whenever the grid goes down. Antigua and Barbuda is not the only island nation that's going to be facing climate change impacts. The increasing viability of technology and the decreasing cost of these vehicles, we're really at a moment where the electric vehicle revolution is ripe for prime time. So we want to see these clean energy technologies throughout the Caribbean, as well as other parts of the world. My biggest hope is that the rest of the world will transition as quickly as possible and mitigate as quickly as possible. We we can't afford to adapt to a two degree world or a two and a half to three degree world. Our goal is always to leave the community and the world in a better place for our children. My hope for our students is that they have a bright and healthy and happy future. Antigua and Barbuda have a lot of development and I'm very excited to see how we could create a clean, more sustainable world for future generations. Let's go, let's do it, we're ready.